Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Valentine's Day here at uh, Latimer Park for Kettering Town, the poppies against AFC Hayes known as the Brook. And we come here looking at the pitch in a very sort of moist and damp um, conditions but uh, we'll have to cope with that the best way that uh, we can. Uh, with me this afternoon is our media guru uh, Craig Turnbull. Afternoon, afternoon. Craig. And uh, later we'll be speaking with uh, Alan Dapper Doyle uh, by popular demand of course. And also we've got uh, Justin Lovegrove in the studio to have a chat with. After the game, we've got the commanding Elliot Sandy, who will be speaking about his Just Giving page. And obviously we're going to have uh, one of the managers and uh, maybe somebody else popping in. Who knows, uh, a hat-trick hero, a goal scorer or uh, anybody else that pops by. So that's all to come in around 25 minutes' time. Uh, prior to that, we've had uh, two wins in the last two games. Uh, the Poppies now are back on top of the league. We had a win last week at uh, Potter's Bar Town, which uh, Craig and myself were out there to see uh, Gary Mulligan mm -hmm. getting off the mark. And uh, it was quite an impressive game, all but for a 15-minute period, Craig. Uh, it, it was a brilliant game. I, I thought after, um, you know, I thought it was a little bit disappointing at Beaconsfield at, at here. And to turn that around and have a fantastic performance against Potter's Bar, um, where we, you know, definitely dominated the first half. And... Uh, we probably thought we won the game um, with about 25, 30 minutes to go. We took our uh, foot off the pedal and fair play to Potter's Bar. They, they they came into the game, they rattled the post, they hit the bar. Um, Richard Knight had two fantastic saves to make and they, they got back in the game. But uh, like I said with Gary Mulligan, it, he come off the bench, he was asked to do a job and to get that third goal and uh, he done it superbly. Yeah, a bit harsh, I think, about the Beaconsfield game. The, the, the conditions didn't really ally to, to good football. It was like a, a skating rink out there. But um, the Poppers did well to win that 1-2-1. One, one. But yes, it could have been 2 all at um, Potter's Bar. Certainly the one that ricocheted like Jeff Hurst goal in 66 um, on, the, on the line and bounced out. And Knighty putting off some good saves. But uh, Ketrin are top of the league uh, by goal difference over um, Bedworth United. And in third place, his next week opponents... Mm -hmm. um, Ellsbury FC, so it's going to be quite an interesting afternoon with um, some interesting games coming up, which we'll bring you a little later. Well, we've played AFC Hayes already this season, winning 5-0 mm -hmm. with goals from James Clifton, Andy Hall, Andy Gooding, a couple of goals there, I think, and Doobie yeah. Bonner. Uh, well, last season we won here 3-1, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. uh, with Clifton again scoring and Gooding. And um, that came in that amazing ten goal, uh, ten game streak. Uh, right? Yes, it did, and uh, and then we went down uh, there earlier on, and uh, unfortunately come off the back of a two one defeat there, which I think, if I remember correctly, Scott Cross got our goal there. Yeah, it was Scott's stadium. only uh, Scott's only game for the club there in the mm -hmm. season. That amazing turnaround, and went back to Daventry, and now plays at um, Bedford Town. But yes, he scored in that game later on. But uh, that was a performance last season. But that's all all history. Mm -hmm. We're not bothered about that one. Today's game is vitally important. As um, Hayes have only won two of their last um, seven games, but they won last week against Royston. Yeah, big result for them, yeah. New manager, new players in. So, a uh, bit of uncertainty what we're going to face today, but um, the second bottom. It's it's one of those tricky, but it's it should be three points written all over it today. Oh, oh, you've heard that here first. Uh, <laughs> uh, Craig there has uh, overstepped the mark and uh, given out a, a positive Ketrin, Ketrin win. Well, let's hope that he's right with that one. But, uh, of course, uh, we have struggled against sides in the lower regions this season mm -hmm. and we're going to have to watch out for Ryan DeBasta, uh, their uh, informed striker who's scoring most of their goals and uh, he will need to be watched this afternoon. But... Uh, uh, Potter's Bar, of course, have been um, struggling to get here with uh, amazing um, car crashes on the M40 and M1, mm. I believe. So, uh, 30 car pilot with some pilot, So uh, We do believe they're still en route as we are on air. So uh, if the game is delayed at all, we will bring you um, coverage of that, obviously. But uh, at the moment, it's still to be kicked off at uh, 3 o'clock. Uh, going back to Valentine's Day, before we get Justin and the mm. team news, um, this is the fifth time we'll have played on Valentine's Day since 1979. And the stats aren't very good, Craig. Okay. We lost uh, both home games and won both away games. OK. So it's, it's still promising. It's 50-50, but uh, I'm still hedging my bets on a Reds Wednesday. Good for you, good for you. Same here. <laughs> team news. We've uh, Craig will bring the team in a, in a few moments. But uh, we've got team news. Tommy Hull is now available for selection, mm -hmm. uh, having served his uh, two-match ban. We've also got a new signing that was signed yesterday, Joe yes. Curtis. Yes, uh, very, very promising um, midfielder there. Spent five years at Southampton. Uh, two two years of that was actually on a professional contract. Um, he's been at Stamford and Brackley this season. So uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to um, see where 
where he's going to play. Um, I know he's named on the bench to start with, but um, could be a good promising signing there for the Poppies. Yeah, we have Andy Gooding is not available for the work commitments this afternoon, and outgoing we've seen Bukasa uh, join Sabio Rangers on a dual registration, and Claudio Hoban has joined uh, Corby Town for the second time this season. And I'll leave Craig to bring in the news about uh, Doobie as he now will go through um, our team, which uh, we'll have the graphics up hopefully, uh, Glenn. Yeah, so in goal is uh, Richard Knight to uh, basically fill in between the sticks. At right back is James Clifton. Three is skipper today, as usual, Steve Kinneborough. Four, because of Andy Goodin uh, missing out today, Elliot Sandy fills his role in midfield. Five is the uh, ever reliable Brett Sulkin. Six, um, going alongside Brett in, mid, uh, in centre-back there is Tommy Hull. Seven, on the right, you'll have Andy Hall. And eight, in the centre of midfield there, James Jepson. And nine, making his first full, um, not debut, but start today is Gary Mulligan. Ten is Kolodinski, he'll be looking to get some goals today. And on the left is Josh Mormon. And on the bench for us today uh, is Jason Lee. He's been dropped and, and uh, Tommy Hull replaces him. Uh, Nathan Marsh is uh, on goalkeeper replacement duties as uh, Jamie McAlinden's at Silby. Uh, Ash Robinson is also on the bench. And Joe Curtis will be looking to make his first start. And also there is a number 16 today as a Imad Abassi comes in. He's from the under-21 squad, a solid midfielder, so uh, he could be looking to make an impact if called upon today. Well, there's the team, and we'll bring that team again later before uh, commentary with uh, Matt Spearman and uh, A.N. Other, as our usual commentator to Ed is uh, at a wedding, not his own incidentally, but you never know with Eddie, could be doing it, and it's sneakily on there with his uh, bride-to-be, but uh, hope he's having a good day, and hopefully the poppies will do, but uh, one thing about um, Doobie Ogbonna is um, out because of uh, a foot injury. Um... It's, a, it's a toe injury oh. that he suffered on training on Thursday night, late um late on Thursday night, so it's only a precaution. He's just been rested today, so it's uh, it's nothing major, really. So we should be able to see him back on Saturday. So, uh, so yeah, so that's it. So we're going to have our first guest um, joining us now, Craig. Yes. We're going to take that awful, noisy thing out that's on the floor over there. We've got uh, Justin Lovegrove is joining me uh, for a few moments, and uh, Justin is one of our uh, stewards, and uh, he's going to promote. Um, I believe uh, Justin um, is going to be a, a boxing event that you're you're hosting. Can you uh, give us a little bit more information uh, on that? Yeah, it's um, a company called Ultra White Collar Boxing. They go all over the country putting on uh, amateur boxing events for cancer research, and I decided to take the plunge last year to sign up for the event. Uh, successful to get into the event and uh, my fight takes place on the 28th of March this year um, training twice a week for it uh, intense hard work as you can see I'm not the smallest chap in the world <laughs> so it's uh, it is quite hard but I'm enjoying it um, and like I said it's for cancer research and unfortunately in my life I have had relatives and friends pass away through cancer research so this is why I want to do it, raise money for cancer, and um, I will pass on my details for sponsorship in a few seconds. If, if yeah, okay. but far away, yeah. I mean, promote as much as you want, I mean, we're all into these causes, and we've all had um, people, I believe, that, well, I know I have, incidentally, who suffered yeah. with cancer, and it's a, a terrible, terrible illness, and, yeah, it is, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, any money raised is, is brilliant, so yeah, if you want to tell people how they can um, get tickets or help you out, that'd be great. Yeah, if people want to attend the event, like I said, it's on the 28th of March this year, um, it's £20 a ticket, it's down at Ketrian Conference Centre, um, either get in contact with me on a match day, um, if you're friends with me on Facebook, or friends with people who I know, get in contact with them and they'll uh, pass There's always the John Dunham, isn't there, as well? That, that yeah, brother-in-law, John Dunham, I think everyone knows him. Um, get in contact with him. Sponsorship wise, you can always pop and see me, throw me a fiver here, ten of there, pound here, every little helps so it goes towards the cause. There's also my Just Giving page, which is uh, www.justgiving.com forward slash Justin Ifan Lovegrove. Just go on there, donate whatever you can on there. There's also a tech service on that on that site, so it's so easy to do. Just follow the follow the instructions. And you can easily donate whatever you want to on that. Um, so if you can do that for me, that would be much appreciated. 
Well, thank you very much, Justin. We will bring you more news on how Justin gets on with his uh, new skills and um, new equipment, etc., that you're going to need probably for all this stuff. <laughs> so the pictures could be good, and uh, let's hope that it all goes well for you. And uh, thank you for popping along and um, yeah, doing just, that. Yeah, I'd like to say, obviously, a big thank you to the club and Richie himself. Um, the chairman himself has already bought four tickets for the event, so he'll be coming down to support me. Obviously, I've had tickets said today that people want them, and also the club have actually buying my shorts for the event as well. With, is this uh, a big pair of shorts? Yeah, I think <laughs> double XL, I think, so it's not too, it's not too shorts, bad. <laughs> well, that's um, great. That's, that's um, so the club have really got behind me and I'm really, really appreciated f f for that from them. So a big thank you to them as well. Okay, Justin, that's great news. Um, so there we have uh, Justin Lovegrove there on the a new career as now he goes to his second career, which is uh, going to be uh, stewarding this afternoon in the uh, various places. And uh, in a few moments, we'll be speaking to uh, Alan Doyle, I believe. Uh, yes, who's, uh, the famous who's Alan chomping Doyle. at the bit to get in. So uh, let's uh, see what we can do there. So Alan's been with us now a few years, hasn't he? And, he has. Uh, he's been on before, and this is what I believe is by popular demand that we've got um, Mr. Alan Doyle in the studio. There was actually speak. a petition to get him on. Was a petition. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so there we have. So, uh, Greg, if you can pop off again, and um, Alan, if uh, you'd like to uh, come into our studio once again, uh, the intrinsic, uh, uh, intrinsic knowledge here of um, Alan Doyle, who's now going to bring us up to date with the academy setup and the scholars and uh, everything else youth-wise, um, Alan. Greetings. How are you? Yeah, fine, thanks. Yeah. Great. So, how yeah. things, uh, how things developed since the last time you uh, came on? What with the youth setup? The youth setup. Yes. Yeah, we've got some. Uh, it's half term next week, so on Monday. Um, we at the Kettering um, Academy. We've got um, trials for uh, 16 to 19 year olds for the um, both for the scholars and uh, apprentices. Uh, so it's the next next okay. one on the line. We've got Steve Kinnenberg going to be there and Mitch for the under 21. So we'll be running the rule over them at the the Astro. Um, and we'll see how they, they set up, you know. So. This is for the academic year next year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. It's, it's for the next year, and we're, we're, we're looking to spread the whole system. You know, we my Monday night sessions are, um, are really, we, we go from under 10s, under 12s, under 14s and under 15s. We're hoping during the summer and everything, still training at KSA, um, we're hoping to pick up more and more lads. So... Yeah, it, you know, for the first year, it's hard work the first year, you know, but don't forget next year we'll be in the FA Youth Cup, so the lads um, that uh, have been the scholars this year, they'll be 17, so they'll be the right age, and we've got, we've got some not, one or two lads that have come through various systems, we've got a, a very good 15-year-old, a very good 16-year-old, you can see the couple, especially Rebus, in the first team, so, you know, that's what we want, that's the hope for the future, but... It's not just not just the youth set up. We want to get the community part of the club and everything. We want girls teams and and you know we, we want to really work with the community and hopefully that'll help to, to get us a ground and and the facilities are the main thing. You know you these days you you need a, a nice three D surface, a three G pitch and you know it'd be great for the first team as well. You know so I mean that's the ultimate aim. But we we in a year since this. This time last year, we hadn't even discussed anything with, you know, KSA and that, and now we've got the scholars gone through nearly a year, and yeah, it's going well. Does the, does the, um, beside the football, is there anything else offered to, to, to the guys that are doing this? Is it? Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That, it's a full time scholarship. That they they, they, they do their normal school duties as well. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they basically get 12 hours football a week on top of a, a, norm, a normal, normal curriculum. A normal curriculum, yeah. So, so that they, uh, education is a big part of it. So it's a two year course. So, um, and what would they come out with at the end of that course? What, what certificate or what qualification? Um, I think it's, they, they're doing um, A levels. So, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's a, it's a decent course. course. Yeah, A level course, yeah. So, so the, the, it's, it's quite a hard standard and everything. But, you know, we're, the, we're looking to, to hopefully, if we get somewhere the right place to do it, we're looking for our own apprentices as well, that they will do some, some work as well. Um, and if we find them facilities, we'll obviously need things like teachers and stuff like that. So Because the Avondale site would have been ideal for that, wouldn't it? Being a school already yeah, and yeah. having the facility behind it. Yeah. But uh, that looks like it's a, a non-starter. Incidentally, we haven't heard any official news from either Rockingham Road or the Avondale um, Centre uh, for our ground development. So at the moment, we're in a, in a void there, Alan, aren't we? 
Yeah, I, I, no news is not, like Richie said, no news is, is particularly good news because we'd like to, you know, if we can't have that one, we go to the next one and the next one. So, you know, if anybody's out there who knows of uh, suitable land and premises, you know, because we've got the same problem in Cambridge where I live. We, Cambridge City have got pre, have got a ground. They're, they're sharing with Histon now. And the chairman brought a plot of land, which they've now got planning permission for in a place called Salston. And they started work, but they started work, but then they don't envisage planning there for another two years. So Jeez. it's not a, you know, unless you pick up a, a, a place where you can start straight away, it's, it's quite a long way away. So, you know, we, we need... Um, need a premises. We need it, yeah. So basically get down to the um, KSA then on Tuesday and Wednesday? No, it's not KSA, it's the um, the Astro, the Kettering Leisure, Leisure Centre. Yeah, yeah. That's get down to the Kettering Leisure Centre. Yeah, don't John go to KSA, on, no, uh, it's the On Tuesday one. and uh, No, Wednesday. on Monday, no, just Monday at 2 o'clock. Oh, right, this is uh, yeah. good for the information that yeah, I'll give you. Yeah, it's Monday at 2 o'clock. Oh, right, okay. And yeah, that's so, why you heard it here from yeah, Alan. So, right, yeah. so there we are, that, that's so, good news. Yeah. Get down there and uh, see if you can be part of... Uh, and obviously, you know... If things with, with the young lads that come here we get a lot of them now they get passes to come into the game so we're, we're getting more of them and, and you know anybody next week you know obviously we, we've got an important match today and we that's the that's the thing for now we've got to win that because if we drop points in a match like this it, it, it makes next match week's match even harder but Next match, week's match is a big, big game. Yeah, we're going, to, we're going to come on to the first team. You've yeah. uh, obviously been in, in a position in the chair, to, so yeah. to speak, um, yeah. Petra, in a couple of seasons ago. It, yeah. uh, it must be difficult watching from the sidelines, knowing what, how you'd go around things and how things are being gone around, let's say, and players coming in and out. So you do have a, a bit of influence on players that you uh, see and report back to the management, yes? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I speak to, to, to Scott and Thomas um, practically every day and... and we discuss um, targets, and uh, I do reports on other teams and everything. But um, obviously, we, you know, the the main focus is is, is been a midfield player. Uh, we need a midfield player, and one's popped up on the door who actually lives in Kettering, who's who's just spent five years at Southampton. So we've seen him a bit in training, and he, he's done well. So we're hoping he gets a, a, a bit of a run out in the second half today, and and. In hoping he's going to be the answer. I mean, we've been very unlucky because I've I've sort of had we've had I've had four yeah. lads midfield yeah. players in the last three months. The one was almost on the dotted line, didn't and they? And all all the lot of them, you know, in my opinion, would have been an improvement. And and all of them, we just fell at the last because of job, because of travelling, whatever. You know, not because of money or anything like that. But it's you know. The first and foremost, if you come to Kettering, you're you're playing in front of people, so there's pressure. Um, but Never. you've got to want to, you've got to want to, to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and we've been a bit unfortunate, but you know we're trying to improve the team as we go. And and you know as as for formations and things that, you know we I'm I'm like any other supporter that I've got my ideas and things, and I can actually speak to to the management and say you don't know what you're doing or you do know what you're doing and. And uh, so, can, so can, I'm quite can, lucky can, can in a way, really. One? Yeah, you can. Yeah, so of course you can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course go. you can. Yeah. But uh, well, that's great. That's uh, that's good news that you have a, a very good input into it. Yeah. You're the, you are the technical director, aren't you? That's so right. Yeah. You should be able to have some input yeah, into yeah. into who comes in. But uh, today's game, as you say, is a very important one. AFC Hayes. So we have to win this game. Um, they've just changed management, and they've got, um, I yeah. think, four points out of the last two games. Yeah, they've beaten so, Royston uh, on Tuesday. Was yeah, a, it's a good result. You have to be good to beat a team like that. So you know. I mean, Didn't we beat them 5 0? Uh, we did beat Royston 5 0, uh, yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> so Even though they got 22 players on contract. <laughs> but no, That's amazing, isn't it? 22 yeah, players on contract. Yeah, incredible, yeah. But yeah, they, I mean, I think, the, I think the thing is with football, to, to going back to my day to now, is that, that, that they're so much fitter, every team, they're, they're coached, and, and, and not so easy matches. I mean, Potter's Bar last week, you know, they had, they had two or three really good players. You know? Craig and I mentioned uh, in in the pre-match earlier on there that um, they could have levelled at two all the one that oh, hit the, yeah, the one in the bar and yeah, come out and, and uh, for that fifteen minute period they were as dangerous a side that uh, we've seen this year. But um, well, that's the way football turns. I mean, mm -hmm. the thing is, if you look at you look at the game at um, Northwood, that boy had won the goal, didn't he, from nowhere, and then the 
the, the go home game down here when we managed to get through and win two one he hit a weld he didn't he just before half time but they go he, in they go in when you're luck but also you, in, in, in the evidence out. north we had a very good goal disallowed we did, which yeah. wasn't offside yeah. and um, it was blatantly yeah, a good goal Dude, he's so, told so. me about that several times uh, really yeah, I wouldn't have right, thought Dougal yeah. would have kept short of, uh, yeah. kept quiet about it yeah. but uh, of course you're not in the sight today Alan he's, uh, he's injured at yeah now, he's got so. I think they we used to call it him my day of black toe, but I think it's now technically <laughs> it's, it's um, blood tr clots under the nails or something now, so you know, it's probably a three week operation or something. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> Might get some nail varnish and paint over Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nobody, but, uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much okay. for um, popping in. That's great to hear. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get you on again. I know that um, Papa Demand wanted you well, on here, and as, yeah, you know, yeah. it did boost the ratings up considerably. Yes, last it time did. Yes, so, You're quite um, right. So there we are. We're going to get quite Craig, rightly so. Craig thank back in. Much. Thank you, Alan, and Lovely. keep us informed of what goes on. That's yeah. great. Thank you, you very much. It. No problem at all. So we're going to finish off now before uh, with match commentary with uh, Craig and. Uh, do you um, actually really need me here after that? <laughs> well, it's always a difficult person to follow, Alan, because his uh, knowledge of the game is very, very good indeed. And, um, you know, he's been around, he's done most things except manage Brazil. But, um, you know, he's, uh, he's a great um, asset to the club and uh, one that um, I think most clubs need. But uh, we have a bit of news about the terrace in behind the goal, then, Craig. Yes. Can you enlighten our viewers? Um, well, it's, it's only a little bit of information. I know probably um, half a catcher and sitting on the edge of their seats now. But, <laughs> At least 14 um, on one uh, forum. <laughs> yeah, we, we've just basically uh, just been given permission to um, where we are on the far side is to basically put down some more concrete. We're, we've been allowed to do that. This is footings, isn't it? For yeah. A, for a stand that's going to go yeah. behind the old tree. So um, that's, that's, uh, there, that's going to be hopefully done within the next week or so. So um, hopefully we'll get some good cover then behind that goal, which uh, yeah, we're, which is paramount. That has been one of the top agendas for Richie. Um, I, I do know after speaking with him last night and actually speaking to him on a few occasions that that has been paramount. And um, but there's nothing else really that I can report on. Um, that that's the only information that that I know of. Okay, let, let's just um, before, well, well before that we do have uh, Gail Butcher in the um, clubhouse who's uh, yes. selling copies and signing copies of uh, the Butch, uh, Butch, uh, the Wings of Football uh, book that we promoted a few um, few weeks ago. There, if you can see that very well, but that um, is what it is. And I do have the book; it's a very good read, especially the the part about um, Kettering Town, of course, when uh, Richard Butcher played um, all that time ago. But uh, she's in there signing books at the moment and uh, a great ambassador for another great cause and uh, hopefully that book will will go well. But uh, we've had a few, once again, um, problems with um, Poppy's TV, Craig, that probably you can uh, yes. enlighten one or two people. It's uh, not as easy as you think and uh, people keep comparing it to last season's um, operation, which is, was entirely different. Mm -hmm. It was just a case of um, at Potter's Bar, we we basically stream the audio side of it off um, a bit of software called Ustream, which uh, is free. You can get it off the internet. Uh, we've been using it for two years now, and it just so happened uh, in the second half or or, or at half time, the second half, just crash on us. Hmm. Um, so the software went down. Uh, we had four G. We we had you know uh, everything working a laptop working 4G we we had the commentators everything there but what it we does had, seem though to be happening on, on a sort of reoccurring basis especially the away it, games it does and I know a lot of Poppy's fans are sitting there going well it just you know it's just one thing after another and it is technology um, but there is no excuse for it and it is something that we're trying to iron out and. Um, Myself, Richie, behind the scenes, Glenn, and uh, the rest of the media team, like yourself, we, we are working tires, tires, tirelessly to um, basically get that sorted. Of tongue twister today. <laughs> I can't get your hands up. believe me. Hands for us all. I know it's probably because I know that my other half's watching me at home, so oh. because it's Valentine's Day, so oh. love you, Amanda. Well, I'd have thought you'd a, 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 a romantic afternoon here at Latimer Park in the um, burger and chips. No, she's got the cats look after. That's her excuse. So well, it's um, probably the better of two evils. Yeah. It, it is a bit of a <laughs> well, less So, um, but yeah, it's it's technology that we're looking to sort out, and uh, we we need to sort it out. And um, but it was just as simple as a technical glitch, as it was, and Ustream just didn't happen to manage to go up until about seven o'clock that evening. Which, unfortunately for Ed and Matt, who put all that effort into that commentary that day, um, that they, they were done by uh, just a little bit of software, unfortunately.
that to this season the service that we provide home and away will remain a free service and um, next season it will be a, a pay by view yes um, a pay by view service which uh, people will mm -hmm. decide to use or not use and if we don't get the uh, required amount needed then it'll just be on the new website there'll be content yes. on there which uh, we are bringing a new website to hopefully we keep on about this new website but hopefully that will be coming in the next uh, few weeks it's almost ready it is um, a, it is almost ready we're, we're going to trial it towards the last couple of weeks of the season right. but it will go fully live um, touch wood by June um, and it's very exciting. I've, set, I've seen it working. It's absolutely brilliant bit of kit. It will make Ken Samuel's life a lot easier. Uh, putting in match reports. You can't say the word Ken Samuel without the word president before it. Sorry, yeah, I, for, I forgot about you do, that. That's Club the point. Oh, <laughs> that's my beer yes, money gone for beer today. Then. Gone, then. That's a beer. We don't drink beer here. It's cups of tea and coffee, and if you know that, you don't come on here drinking beer. Come on, they all know <coughs> Poppies fans. Well, that's true, but, um, so yeah, so Poppies TV yeah. will be going, um, will be going on, and no uh, mm -hmm. doubt there will be more um, problems. But uh, we will try and overcome those, and hopefully it won't um, disrupt the service too much. But we're not too far away from kickoff, and uh, next Saturday, of course, we've got that uh, exciting game against uh, Aylesbury FC. A, a real, a real cliffhanger that's going to be, and the game against mm -hmm. Agam Town, I think, which on the twenty third of February now has been uh, cancelled because they're in the semi final of the. Yes. Red Inshore Cup. So but mark that down in your diaries. That game will have to be rearranged again. Yeah. Well, so um, that is one that we're going to have to look out yeah. for. It's, uh, it's a shame that um, these cup competitions, lesser cup competitions, take preference to league matches. But stupid uh, rule. But uh, it is. But it's one that we have to um, button down to and uh, and uh, carry on with. So uh, so there we are. So we're not far away now from commentary. And um, no, we're not. I mean, my head's been shaken. The head's been shaken. And there are Potters. But are Potters bar? I'm not even playing them. I F C. I F C Hayes here yet. AFC Hayes have arrived and they're not in the tunnel, but uh, so we're going to have to keep uh, flannelling on with you then. So let's think about it, Craig, at a, a, at a, a longer distance here. How, yeah. how do you think then that um, if the game, if we don't win today, how much more pressure is that going to put on to the Kettering Town management, the players for that game against Aylesbury FC, especially if Aylesbury win? Aylesbury are playing Egham mm. today, of course, and uh, we've got uh, Bedworth United at mm. Handwell, the, probably the, beside our game, the top game in the division, yeah. and Rugby Town are away at Leighton. Two games have mm. been postponed Barton Rovers against Marlow, mm -hmm. Waterlog Pitch, and uh, Uxbridge against Bedford. But how do you think? We're going to have to react if we don't get what we need today. It's not a foregone conclusion, really. I know you it's said. It's not. I know you said that we'll we, we win and win comfortably. Well done for that. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not so convinced because, as I said earlier, we do struggle against these sides. Yeah, yeah, we do. But uh, I think, for a confidence point of view, today is massive. Um, you know, we we done so, uh, the hard work was so. Um, the hard work was done as Potter's Bar. We're, we've come into this game uh, against a much changed AFC Hayes side, but um, we got to carry that confidence into Aylesbury. And if Aylesbury slip up today, then that's um, it's a little bit of uh, a notch up that we've got on them. But well, they're no mugs, are they? I no, mean, um, no, they're not. You know, to be they're, fair, they're, they're, they're not a bad side. We've beaten them, I think, most times we've played them. But uh, they've been tough games. The game, especially at their place, was, was very difficult yes. this season and last season. And on their day, they, they could provide an upset. But uh, we can't really look at other teams, can we? We're just going to really grind out results. And today, to me, is, is as important as next week. Of course it is. It is. It's absolutely massive. And I think the first 20 minutes, for me, is going to be big. Um, if we don't score early, um, you know, I can see Latimer Park getting a bit tense. Probably the fans will. I can see Latimer Park beyond with a lot of sand. On it. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, got more sand than Blackpool if, at if the moment. Look at that out there. They have. Um, it did rain um, heavily last night, and uh, a couple of games, as I said a, a few moments ago, have been postponed. Mm. And uh, I think too much more rain, Craig. Looking at that, our game could have been in doubt. It, it, it could have been. We, we all know what Latimer Park is like, but um, you know, someone was looking down on us and knowing that we we had to get a game on today and win today and um, you know it, it's big that we can get this game on because we, we don't need any more fixture pilots. Well no as I say the Agin, the Agin game has been rearranged because they're in the semi-final of the Red Shore Cup and uh, again we've got to rearrange that one so that does make things a little difficult. I believe now I can hear some noise and the players are in fact coming out at last so uh, that's enough from me and uh, Craig. You'll probably hear our dulcet tones a little later on the on the microphone. So we're going to hand you over now to uh, Matt Spearman, who's um, 
on commentary up there in the gantry with a fantastic view and uh, over to you Matt. <laughs>